when we're optimizing in a cultivation facility, there's some high level goals here that I don't think most people are considering. And one of the things is we're really trying to optimize in total for the number of usable flower sites per cubic foot across our entire canopy. So there's been a development over the last decade or so of optimizing rooms. And at first we were all growing in confined trays where you would just light the surface of the tray. People realized like, oh, wow, there's all this aisle space in between trays and this is just wasted potential yield. So we began to light the room and try to figure out how can we use up all of this space. And there's a lot of innovations here, taking stuff from traditional agriculture, like rolling benches so that the aisles could disappear when people weren't working in them. And you get back a lot more usable square footage for canopy in a room. And then we realized that, well, that's just two dimensions. Let's make it three dimensional. And how can we optimize the depth of the canopy as well? And this has particularly become more possible with higher intensity LED lighting. We can put them at higher PPFDs and get better penetration. Ultimately, we're trying to manage how many usable flower sites we have per cubic foot. A usable flower site, a functional one, has to achieve a minimum PPFD for that area to produce quality flower. The other side of that is you've got this cubic footage of canopy. How do you optimize the plant side of it? And there's this balance here between plant size and how long it's been vegged for and plant spacing. And it's really important to get this balance right. There's not any one way to do it, but there's a lot of wrong ways to do it and a lot of right ways to do it. And the important thing is if you're going to go with a high planting density, say one plant per square foot or something like that, then the plants need to be smaller and have a shorter veg time. And on the other side, if you're going to go for a lower planting density, so you have one plant for every two square feet, then you need to have a longer veg time to achieve the same cubic footage of productive canopy. And this is an area where I see a lot of issues because a lot of people seem to think that the idea is jam in as many big plants as you can, as close together as possible to really maximize yield. But this actually causes a lot of problems. One of the main ones is if you have your plants too close together and too big, then they're going to overgrow each other and start competing. When this happens, you get shading from one plant to the plant next to it, lots of branches covering each other. It changes the ratio of light wavelengths that are hitting some of the lower branches. And then this triggers a pretty massive stretch response. We call this the shade avoidance response. And all of a sudden, a plant has switched from devoting its energy to generating new flower sites and keeping internode spacing nice and tight you end up with fewer bud sites per cubic foot because they end up stretching way farther apart. And the canopy is so dense that they're not getting adequate light. So on the other side of it, you've got what happens if you don't get your plants large enough or their space too far apart relative to their size and veg time. And then you just have wasted canopy. And ultimately, our master variable here is how many photons are getting absorbed over the course of the plant's life cycle. And if you have photons that are hitting the bench because they're not getting absorbed by a leaf, then that's potentially wasted photosynthesis, wasted yield and potency. So to avoid both these sides, we're really looking to balance the veg duration and the plant spacing. It varies depending on the strain and how quickly the plants are growing, the vigor, the health of the clones, but in general, I like to do something like five to seven days of veg time for each square foot that a plant's going to cover. So for example, in most of my facilities, I'm growing at one plant for every two square feet. And those plants are getting about a 12 to 14 day veg time, 10 on some of the really fast growing strains. And of course that changes as you go longer because the growth rates will accelerate as plants develop more root mass and so on. But that's kind of a good rule of thumb the important thing is when you flip a plant, you want it to be completely filling your cubic canopy by the time it finishes stretching. But if it has filled that up a week into stretch, then you're going to run into shade avoidance response and 
really non-optimal growth characteristics and plant structure over time. Yeah, and then you said it so well, the veg time per square feet that your plant is covering is a super, super good calculation and way to base your planning and scheduling efforts off of uh, your crop rotation in the facility. But then you can take it one step further and look at different uniquenesses of certain facilities. I've seen vertical facilities with three tiers of flower and they only have four and a half feet, maybe five feet from the bench to the bottom of the light. So they're even more constricted now on overall finished flower height. And maybe they're looking at same plant spacing, one plant for every two square feet or call it, you know, 15 plants for a 32 square foot, four by eight section. But they're limited to like five days of edge because they just know that they're so short in canopy restrictions based on whoever designed the facility trying to put a third or fourth tier of flowering in the same room, which is completely uneconomical when it comes to labor and how efficient you are working that you're just taking less of a yield on each of those tiers when you could have maximized it with less tiers so then what leads into trellising you've now reached a point in that initial stretch where you only have soft tissue now that's workable and bendable for so many more days before it hardens off and you really can't train that plant on which path of least resistance it needs to get through as far as filling those trellis squares if the density is not right and the veg time is not right you're gonna miss that window of perfect opportunity to maximize your trellising efforts directly under the light but also like you said in that aisle i mean i've seen it so often where you look at like a a a typical four by eight foot bench section on a vertical two-tier flower system you have 32 square feet you come in and you see these little six by six sections that don't have any bud sites in them and maybe they're in the middle between the rows of plants or maybe they're on the edge and then you add all those up and you're like well there's three or four square feet of unusable canopy because the spacing may have not been proper on the bench or the trellising efforts were missed and not prioritized to allow these shoots to direct themselves through that path. Some genetics just do it exactly how they should every time without touching them, but some need a little bit more finesse to kind of guide them, right? And fill up that that section on the side. And you're like, well, there's 10% of your canopy right there. 10% is a huge number when you're talking grams per square foot at the end of the day. And it's just sometimes it's five minutes of extra attention to that plant spacing. Are you setting those plants in perfect rows of three or four, or however the dimensions of your table allow you to do it in the size of container that you're in? Or are they kind of all over the place, ununiform, just a lackluster effort of standardizing the filling of that space? Are they pulled all the way to the edge of the bench to give them the best opportunity to fill in that that side? I call it the side boob, you know? <laughs> Um, <laughs> you gotta look down that road and see you want to see that nice fill on the side of that bench not just like oh i can i can see the spikes of the edge of the trellis while you're looking down the edge and like all these gaps in between where productive foliage should be in there you know yeah so. that's a really good point and you can zoom in one more level from plant spacing and plant density to actual branch density. And this is where the trellising and the plant work becomes really important. Sometimes you have strains that just perfectly grow uniformly and fill up the entire canopy completely uniformly. But this isn't usually the case. The trellising and plant work becomes really important here. You have to throw down the trellis at the right time. And as the plants are stretching, I like to go through and just really quickly spend a couple of minutes every day or every few days just going down the rows and just spreading out branches really gently. Nothing that takes a lot of labor. We're not talking about weaving branches or anything like that. Just talking about spreading them out to empty trellis squares. Like if you're looking down from the perspective of the light directly down on the plants, where's the biggest gaps? Just guide the closest branch into that gap. And doing a little bit of that, you can get a really nice density of branches, which makes the light intensity on the flower sites much more uniform down the line. And then when you come through to do your pruning a little bit later, this can potentially save you a lot of work. 
when I'm going through a room and I'm looking at it and say we're in there as the plants are finishing stretch and I'm thinking, how can I get the best light, the best intensity to the most bud sites while still capturing all of the photons that are coming down? Selectively, there'll be a point where it's too deep for the light to productively reach. So you might clean up the bottoms of your plants and leave the top 30, 36 inches of canopy. So that's your depth of canopy right there. And then in that top 30 to 36 inches of canopy can selectively defoliate as necessary to open up light to those flower sites. You don't want to take more leaves than you need to because plants put a lot of resources into generating all of that. But selectively taking leaves, especially off the top half of the canopy, so that light can reach the lower flower sites. And then having a nice layer of leaves near the lower half of the canopy so that any remaining photons still get captured and are usable for photosynthesis. Getting that balance right, the balance of trellising, plant spacing, branch spacing, canopy depth, and canopy density of the foliage is really key to getting the highest grams per square foot and the maximum quality from every flower site that you can get there. And it's just another area where if you mess up that planting density relative to plant size and you have a super, super dense canopy, and you've got your work cut out for you. It might be five times as much labor going through because you're having to remove far more branches, far more flower sites. You may have to prune the canopy up higher and then remove leaves for twice as long or three times as long. So it can really become sort of a compounding nightmare if you miss this balance too badly. Yeah, there are the super unique instances where you have licensed facilities that are maybe limited to plant restrictions and how many plants they can grow. But then they've just set up too much canopy for their allowable plants, right? And so they're like, all right, well, I'm going to grow for 40 days in veg. I'm going to grow this massive plant and I'm going to top it 100 times. Then I'm going to put them in flower and scrog them down where they're just flat, but they're reaching to fill in this space, right? It, it happens every day in certain places that, you know, maybe just are trying to stretch their abilities and how they're filling their space. And that's okay. I think like you have to get creative in certain instances when you have those types of unique restrictions and you can't optimize your canopy with the, the proper plant density based on what you're limited to. And you're just overall, you're trying to fill too much canopy with the plants that you're allowed to grow. In those cases, there's unique techniques and unique opportunities to help with that. But again, the consideration is optimal veg time, trellising techniques, and then into your pruning for what you're going to leave on and what you're going to take off. 